Hi friends. Do you say things to yourself that you would never say to another human being? Hi, I'm Gina with Hope and Cope. Here we talk about how to have our best life in spite of painful and sometimes even tragic life events. My topic today is on self-abuse. And when I was a child, I was bullied, but I promise you that no one has ever said as mean of things to me as I have said to myself. So why do we say mean things to ourselves? And some people sadly even do worse. They actually do self-harm, physical harm to themselves. So why does this occur? I wanna to suggest to you that those terrible thoughts, those self-inflicted painful thoughts don't always come from ourselves. They come from the enemy of our souls. They come from P uh, the source of lies and those wicked thoughts get planted into our psyche. And then we think that that's the way we really feel about ourselves when really it's just the way the devil feels about you. And I have a scripture that I want to share with you. I know this is not my Bible study content. This is my regular content, but I have a scripture for you that I hope will shed some light on this topic. The Bible says in Revelations 12, verses 10 through 12, then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens. It has come at last, salvation and power to the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to earth, the one who accuses them before our God day and night, and they have defeated him by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony. I know no one's perfect. I know we always make mistakes, but I wanna ask you, if someone else made the mistakes that you make, would you be kind to them? If someone else had the shortcomings that you have, would you be merciful to them? Would you be able to be kind and gracious? Then why can't we be kind and gracious to ourselves? We're just human beings. And I had just built this whole life of self-defeating thoughts and self-abuse, verbal self-abuse. And it didn't really come to light to me until my daughters were young and I caught myself saying really mean things, not just sort of mean things, but really mean things to myself in front of my daughters. And I saw that I was easily being a bad influence on my children. There's nothing like our own children walking around reflecting back to us our behavior to really see what our character flaws are. And I recognize that I could not continue to verbally abuse myself in front of my children if I did not want that to harm them. So I began to try to break those old habits and it was extremely hard to do, but I did persevere. And now for one, I don't even hardly have the negative thoughts, but if I do, I usually will say something like, oh, silly mommy, or, well, that was silly of me, but I don't say those really horrible, stupidest, ugliest, dumbest, worthless. I just don't say those hor horrible, horrible things to myself, about myself, and verbally out loud to other people. I don't do that like I did when I was young. And I, I, you know, I really try to just never do it, try to eliminate that behavior altogether. Tell me honestly if it helps anything when you abuse yourself verbally does it help anything does it make you a better person does it make you straighten up i don't think so so instead of saying negative things we need to fill our minds with the truth of god's word we can quote not we don't have to quote scripture but just know scripture and be able to say those things to ourselves for one there is the scripture that talks about we are fearfully and wonderfully made by god the Bible tells us that we are made in his image, that we are his workmanship. That means we are his work of art. The Bible says that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So these are the things we need to say to reinforce to us who we are, what our value is in Christ, and to retrain our brains to not, to not engage in negative self-talk. In addition to reinforcing those biblical principles to ourselves. Ask yourself, what are your good qualities? Please don't say you don't have any. That's a real sign that you are detached from the truth of who you are. Maybe you need help. Maybe you need to talk to a trusted friend, uh, an adult son or daughter, a neighbor, a church friend. 
a sister, a brother, someone, and say, what are my good qualities? Please tell me just a couple of characteristics that I can begin to build on. Am I trustworthy? Am I honest? Am I kind? Am I creative? Am I um, generous? Ask yourself, maybe you can find out on your own. If you can even come up with three, that'd be great. But if you can come up with a list of 10, that would be even better. But come up with some things that are your good qualities and then begin to build on those and focus on the things that we do well and the characteristics that we have that are positive. In addition, I want you to declare the characteristics that you want. You know, if you say, I am not creative, then I assure you, you won't be creative. But if you say, I am creative, that really does cause those creative juices to be able to flow in your mind that you will say, I can think of something fresh. I can put these things together and make something beautiful or new or exciting. You know the saying, if you say you can or you say you can't, you're right. So don't tell yourself you can't. Don't limit yourself. Tell yourself you can. Make some declarations about yourself. I'm gonna just tell you, I heard this years ago. I wish I could give credit where credit is due. I really don't remember where I heard it, but it's not unique to one person. But come up with just a couple declarations about yourself. I really do firmly believe in declarations because the Bible says that God created things by the power of his words, right? So our words, we are not God but we are made in his image and our words have power. We know this, we know, I just spoke in one of my previous videos about the power of the tongue. So we know that our words have great power. So why not use it for good and use it as a source for good in other people's lives and in our own life. So begin to make some declarations about yourself. Just pick two or three things that you want to declare over yourself and write them down because we'll forget if we don't write them down. Write them down and try to say them to yourself every day. Say them to yourself until it's second nature and you don't have to look at that paper to remember your declarations. You can just say it off the top of your head. So a long time ago, I made a declaration of just three things about myself that I wanted to see myself pursue. I have decided lots of other declarations, but these were my first three declarations that I made about myself and I wrote them down and I'm gonna share them with you off of this piece of paper. So I declared that I'm positive, I'm energetic, and I'm thoughtful. And I realized after I decided that those were the three things that I wanted to work on in my life, that it, it blended really nicely with the Bible verse that said, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So the word positive, um, to me, meshes really well with the sound mind. The energetic is the power. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power. And then the thoughtfulness was love. So when I think of others, when I try to put others first, when I try to be a blessing to somebody, when I try to send that text or make that phone call that's gonna be encouraging, that's the love and the thoughtfulness. So they really did overlap with each other. So, you know, my goal is to be positive, energetic, and thoughtful. So that's a good place to start. Just come up with three things. Maybe if that is too hard for you, if you come from a place of a lot of self-loathing, like where I was probably 25 years ago, maybe coming up with three things seems almost impossible. Come up with one, and then maybe in a week or two, add a second, and then in a week or two, add a third. But write these down and try to say them to yourself every day and see if it doesn't help you begin to wash away that negative talk. Remind yourself that you are made in the image of God, that you are God's creation. You are his handiwork. You are his masterpiece, that he loves you and he doesn't make junk and he does not want you defeating yourself by the power of your own words. I know that self-abuse, verbal self-abuse is a tough topic. I also know that it would be virtually impossible for us to abuse someone that we really loved and respected. So we've got to dig down. We've got to love ourselves because God first loved us. We've got to love ourselves because we were found worthy by God to be redeemed by the blood of his son. And we've got to try to depose those negative thoughts and replace them with the truth of God's word. And I know this is not easy, it's a process, it takes years and it takes prayer and it takes diligence and it takes deliberately going back and saying, that was not true, I am not stupid, I am not stupid, I am smart, I just made a mistake and 
counter. Talk back to yourself and tell yourself the truth. You've got to start speaking the truth to yourself. And the truth is not that you're worthless. It's just not, absolutely not. That is a lie straight from the pit of hell. And then remember the scripture that we just read together about the accuser of the brethren. Day and night, day and night he accuses us to the Father and to ourselves. He accuses me of being worthless, of being lazy, of being stupid, of being a failure. These things, he tries to accuse me all the time. And I have just built the armor and I just refuse to listen to those things anymore. I, re I, I decide, I deliberately, intentionally listen to the things that God says about me. In spite of my mistakes, I'm not saying I don't make mistakes. I'm just saying that I'm more important than my mistakes. If you have actually crossed over and you don't just say mean things, but you actually do s physical self-harm, I just wanna encourage you to seek help. You are worth the work, You're wor it's worth the help. Trust me, that kind of physical self-harm or even the verbal abuse, it's not helpful. It will not propel you in life in any positive way. If you want to get off of the negative track that you're on, you are going to have to take a leap of faith, do something courageous and begin to do things differently than you have in the past so that you can get off of this wicked, wicked downward spiral of self-abuse and self-negative talk. I hope this was helpful. I know, again, this was just another heavy topic. It's always my goal to bring value to you through these videos. So I hope, really hope that this is reaching out and touching someone in a meaningful way. I also always put a song and a Bible verse in the description box. If you wanna stay around, check that out. If this was helpful, please tap that like button for me and share it with a friend. I'm putting out content twice a week these days, so be looking for that. And remember, I love you and I'm praying for you. God bless.